11, someone caught it on camera. We're getting our first look at the moment a Seattle crane came crashing down, killing four people, including an Oregon iron worker. Details ahead. Plus, my granddaughter, four and a half years old, sees her grandpa with a bleeding hand. The harrowing story from a rabbi hurt in the California synagogue shooting. And now Portland police are beefing up security at local Jewish centers. And a neighbor dispute turns violent in Vancouver. One man is dead, another is in the hospital. Details on a shooting in broad daylight on the victim's front lawn. The news at 11 starts now. This is KGW News at 11. We begin tonight with video of the moment. The moment a crane collapsed onto a busy street in downtown Seattle. A driver just happened to catch it on their dash cam yesterday. Our sister station, King 5, obtained this video exclusively. You'll notice we are choosing, as is King 5, not to show the actual impact. We've frozen it beforehand, and then you can see a still frame of part of the crane midair, and then another still frame of the dust and debris that filled the air after it landed and tonight investigators with the state of Washington have opened a huge multi pronged investigation into why this happened. Good evening. I'm Maggie Vespa. That construction site, by the way, is supposed to be the home of a new Google campus, and one of the four people killed was an or it was an iron worker from the Portland area. KGW's Lindsay Nadrich joins us now. So, Lindsay, we now know that man's name. Yeah, friends and family identified one of the iron workers who was killed as Travis Corbett from Oregon. Those who knew him are in shock. Facebook is already flooded with posts from people who knew and loved Travis Corbett. The man friends say was one of the iron workers killed in Saturday's crane collapse in Seattle. For now, though, we're not sharing those Facebook posts or photos here because for many, the loss is too soon and too raw. I'm told he was a Marine and recently married. He was a member of the local 29 of the International Association of Bridge, Structural, Ornamental and Reinforcing Iron Workers. He'd been a member for at least 10 years. One union head told the Oregonian he was a great guy, always willing to learn and always helping other people that he could. Seattle Pacific University ID'd another victim today, freshman nursing student Sarah Wong. In a statement, the university said Wong was in a car on Mercer Street when the crane came crashing down. They called it a sudden and tragic loss and asked people to pray for Wong's family. SPU freshman Cody says he and others did just that after hearing Sarah was one of the victims. It didn't make sense for her to, I couldn't imagine her passing away. And then, um... We, some of my friends from the church, we went and we just sat in the, in our dorm lobby and we were just, just taking some time of silence and reflection and also prayer. A group also gathered Sunday to remember the lives lost at the site of the collapse. No. Newly released dash cam video shows the crane falling. An extensive investigation is now underway to figure out what went wrong. The names of all four people killed are expected to be officially released by the King County Medical Examiner tomorrow. Three people were also hurt, including a mother and her baby. They're all expected to be okay. Back to you. All right, Lindsay Nadrich live for us. Lindsay, thank you so much. And experts say state investigators and the contractor involved will work for months to get to the bottom of what exactly happened here. Before yesterday's tragedy, a detailed plan was actually put in place with a step by step outline on exactly how that crane would be dismantled. Susanna Frey, again from our sister station in Seattle, takes a closer look. It's a detailed process. There's a lot of parts and pieces. Mark Lawless is a Seattle-based construction safety and crane expert with 35 years of experience. He says that precise planning is one of the reasons accidents like this are so incredibly rare. They are few and far between, but when they do happen, they're very serious. The big question is how did this happen? Lawless says investigators will look at possible causes such as the plan. Was it executed properly? The balance, were the horizontal jibs appropriately weighted? And the weather, how windy was it? And did a microburst hit the area? That's a localized column of sinking air. Could that be strong enough, though, to affect something this heavy? Uh, a microburst will knock an airplane out of the sky. So, yes. 
The last time a fatal crane accident happened in the state was 2006 in Bellevue. A man in his apartment died when the crane fell into his building. In that case, investigators found the root cause to be a flawed foundation design, along with the general contractor's failure to maintain and inspect the crane base. Getting to the bottom of that took six months. And that was Susanna Frame reporting. Experts say again, it could take six months to a year to piece together what exactly happened in yesterday's crane accident. And we'll, of course, keep following this story and bring you the latest developments on air and online at KGW.com. In the meantime, moving on tonight, back in our area, a man is dead and another man is in the hospital after deputies say an ongoing dispute between neighbors in Vancouver turned into an attempted murder and a suicide. Clark County Sheriff's Office says a man walked across the street and shot his neighbor, who at the time was mowing his lawn. Then they say that man killed himself. This happened around 1230 this afternoon near 174th Avenue and 29th Street. Neighbors say they are shocked. Well, yeah, this is a real quiet neighborhood generally. And, you know, people are really nice and really friendly. So, yeah, this is really kind of... And really unusual. Yeah, we're, we're just out for a walk, which a lot of people do around here on a day like today. And so, yeah, it's very sad to see people in conflict like this. Deputies say there was a protection order already in place between the two men. We don't know what the issue between them was at this point. The man who was shot on his front lawn was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. And in Northeast Portland, police responded to reports of another shooting and found a body in the street. They say the victim in this case was a man and that this happened early this morning near 34th, uh, 31st and Multnomah. No word at this point on an arrest or a possible description of the shooter. As you can tell, details are slim right now. We are waiting on more info from police and we'll bring you updates as they come in. I turn around. And I saw the children that were playing in the banquet hall. I ran to gather them together. My granddaughter, four and a half years old, sees her grandpa with a bleeding hand. And she sees me screaming and shouting, get out, get out. Those heart-wrenching words are from a rabbi who was one of the three people hurt when a gunman opened fire at a Southern California synagogue. One woman was also killed. Police say a 19 year old man just started shooting yesterday as worshipers observed the final day of Passover. Officers say the gun may have jammed and an off duty Border Patrol agent who was in the synagogue fired at the shooter as he ran away. We're told that shooter, a suspect at least, surrendered to police soon after. And here at home, Portland police, after all of that happened, have increased patrols around local Jewish centers and today at a synagogue in Northeast Portland, we found people nervous but determined to worship together and stand up to hate. Here's KGW's Brittany Falkers. A day after another deadly shooting at a place of worship, people here at Congregation Beth Israel are continuing a day of service despite the fear the shooting may have hoped to spur. It's Mitzvah Day at Beth Israel, an annual event giving back to those in need. <laughs> Mitzvah is, this is our responsibility, and as Jews, we feel we have a responsibility to give back to the community. More than 300 congregants volunteering their time in the wake of another tragedy in the Jewish community. All of us are suffering, all of us are breaking, um, and we are all connected. Rabbi Rachel Joseph was understandably worried the attack Saturday in California would keep people home. That it would be an act of courage to come to your house of worship, an act of courage to bring your family to volunteer, to heal this world, to make this world a better place, is devastating. But turnout was even better than expected. It teaches the kids to, to serve others. Just makes everybody feel good, like we're contributing in the world. Shira Fogel and Marty Lefkowitz brought their children to help feed the hungry. It's important for us to be out in the community and be visible. We're here to serve others, and, and that's part of our faith. Despite the perseverance, Saturday's shooting is the difficult reality for religious leaders, that places of worship have become an increasingly common target for violence. It should be painful to all of us. We should all have our places of sanctuary, whether they be religious spaces or secular spaces. We 
have a right to safety. The rabbi who was injured in Poway, California, called on others to spread love in the face of evil. And that's how this Jewish community continues to move forward. Hope is the essence of who we are as Jews, and that means putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to do good, even in the face of evil, and just working so hard not to let that overtake us. Brittany Folgers, KGW News. And it's worth noting again, Portland police say there is no specific threat in this area, but they're increasing patrols to comfort a community that is confronting another shooting. Well, three motorcyclists are hurt after crashing on Highway 26 in Beaverton this evening. Police say they were speeding and weaving in and out of traffic. This happened just after six near the Camelot Court underpass. Police say one of the motorcycles hit a vehicle and crashed and then the uh, two others also crashed. They were taken to the hospital, but we're not told we are told their injuries are not life threatening. Well, turning now to weather, and it was a gorgeous sunny day across the Portland metro area. Portlanders, no surprise, took advantage here. We saw tons of people out and about at Selwood Marine Park. Some of them were sunbathing. Some of them were out on boats on the water. We are jealous here in KGW. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is here now with a look at the week ahead. Hey, Joe. Hey there. I wasn't able to sunbathe, but earlier I was up on the roof, and that's about as close as I got. I'm jealous but of that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we, we saw temperatures close to 70 degrees, and we're going to be seeing some very pleasant conditions going forward. So this is what we saw earlier today in terms of daytime highs. Take a look at Brookings, 77 degrees. Now it's going to be a while before we start to see temperatures in the upper 70s, but still I'm looking at a forecast that brings in at least four, maybe five days with temperatures in the low 70s, maybe a little bit above that along the east side of the state, a little bit cooler with temperatures only in the low 50s. Right now we're seeing temperatures dropping in the upper 40s, low 50s. It is going to be another cold night. Temperatures will be dropping overnight right around the low to the mid 30s. Once again, most of the low to mid 30 readings will be throughout some of the rural areas, but there could be some areas waking up to frost for the second morning in a row, which is crazy because this is late April. 31 degrees is the temperature over in Baker City and up and down the Oregon coast. We're looking at readings in the mid to the upper 40s. So your weather headlines look like this tonight. Clear and cool overnight areas of frost once again this week, sunny and nice and staying dry all week long. I'll have more uh, details in the forecast about just how long the sun Nice guys will be staying with us. Maggie, back yeah, to you. I love the sound of that, Joe. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Hey, we have some good news to share tonight. Yesterday, we told you about this sweet looking dog that was stolen Friday night from a car in Northeast Portland. Well, her name is Rogue, and her owner tells us she has been found. She says someone who saw Rogue's photo on the news saw the dog escape from a car and recognized her. Rogue was dropped off at a local animal hospital and picked up this morning. We're told she was exhausted and dehydrated, but so happy to see her owner.